Yumna, where did you go now? I'm with my colleague Yumna, and for some reason, I can't find you anymore. Am I not online, John? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you can introduce yeah. yourself, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry about that, John. Yeah. Um, just can you just give me one second? Okay, so I'm with my colleague uh, Yumna there. So we are going to take you sorry. through this lecture. It's going to be yeah. only one and a half hours. Uh, I will introduce myself while I'm waiting for Yumna to, to be ready, ready to shoot. Uh, I, I graduated a long time ago, 2006. That's when I got my undergrad and then I did my honors, finished in 2010. And then I did my master's and then I did my PhD. Some of you might be getting ideas of how old I am, but to just get that out of the way, let me tell you how old I am. I am 26 years old. Yumna, over to you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, good morning to everyone. And I'm Yumna Gatta. And clearly you can see from John's introduction, we're going to have quite a exciting class. And I have been tutoring for UNISA since 2014. Um, I also completed my um, degree and honours by 2011. And since then, I have really enjoyed the subject investment management. And I'm passionate about it. And I've been lucky to have had a lot of investment and business experience. And I look forward to taking you through this um, subject through the semester. Thank you. Yes, let's start. You know, it's always a good thing to start with asking people, how is your day? So I am posting a poll in the chat. So a pop up will come in front of you. It says, how is your day? I, did I ask you, how is your day, Yumna? Um, I'll answer on the poll, John, but no, thank you for asking. My day has been great. Thank you very much. <laughs> How is yours, John? Mine is great. I am so excited to have this first lecture. The first Ladies lecture. and gentlemen, we are going to try to have a participative class. From experience, from my experience teaching, if people are not participating, they are not learning. Uh, when I looked at the age distribution, we have relatively young people, but you are not spring chicken anymore. You are not under 20. Most of you are between 20 and 30. So you are within my age group of 26. You know, I'm 26. You know, I'm 26. <laughs> I understand this group, John. I, I'm past this group, eh? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, sorry. Sorry, yeah, you know. <laughs> so, so at least you have a better understanding of them, but I, I just want to emphasize on what John is saying is that um, this is like a PowerPoint presentation and, you know, it's very important for you to be present and not all the information that we ask, uh, that we tell you guys are on the slides. So what's best for you is actually to have a pen and paper ready and make some notes because um, not only will it help you like in terms of tips, but it's the way, brain's way of remembering the entire lesson again, you know, is when you write down and make these little notes of like things which are not on the slides or things which come up in your head or help you to remember better or understand better. So I'd really advise you to be present. It's highly beneficial and it will save you a lot of time. When you yes. Are Let's participate in. Let's let's participate in this session. Otherwise, we sit here one and a half hours. It will be a wasted one and a half hours. Research. Okay, let's let's just tell you what research says. Research says you only remember if you just listen or read the stuff. You only remember thirty percent. But if you engage with the material, your remembering increases. So the more you participate, so like now I can see only seven people responded to ours. How is your day? Seven people out of 22. I wouldn't be happy seven out of 22. But OK, let's start with the agenda. Yumna, can you take us to Jay? Can you just share with the team what we are going to teach today? OK, so today we are covering um, the section bonds, right? So uh, we, are, we will be covering the basics of bonds and how to value a bond. And we will be doing yield calculations, which is like your return on the bond. And then we will be going into a little bit more complex calculations, which is bond duration and convexity. However, 
it's a follow up from basic bond calculations. So that's how we've chosen to structure this class is that each uh, section follows onto the next section. So it, all of it flows very nicely. And then um, we're concluding with effects of the calculation, duration effect, convexity effect, total effect, which is um, how we would like to conclude today. If we finish this agenda, Yumna, I think we are going to celebrate because we, when I looked at the total number of slides, yes, it was like I... 60 slides. So I have my doubts. Okay. So the first section, Yumna, you are, it's yours. Okay, perfect. So the first section uh, we're starting off with is bond basics. So before we um, go into the calculations and the nitty gritty, you need to understand um, what is a bond, right? So the definition of a bond is a long term loan, right? With fixed interest payments, and it's an agreement between an investor and the government or private company, right? So in basic terms, it's um, you're more familiar with a mortgage loan, right? You take out a loan to buy a house, but even companies and all businesses, they also need funding uh, for the business. So you take out a loan. So one side of the, um, on one side, you have the investor, the person lending the money. They have enough money, they're lending to the person who needs the money, which is the issuer, right? And then the issuer pays back not only the capital, but also coupon interest. You know, you have to pay back. Um, we charge you for borrowing the money. So that's called the coupon. That's the interest payment, right? And then you need to, um, you should try and research the bond exchange of South Africa, where all different types of bonds are traded. And then, um, you get a government bond which offers the risk free rate, right? But you would ask yourself, why is the government bond um, trading at the risk free rate? Because um, the government offers bonds which are almost guaranteed, which are guaranteed uh, to be paid, interest to be paid, as well as the capital to be returned back to you. And then you get municipal bonds and you get corporate bonds where the corporates lend money from you and then they pay you interest back. So all businesses need funding. Anybody who needs funding, they issue bonds and investors can lend their money to earn some interest. So that's what bonds are all about. Yes, okay, Ina. So, uh, John, do you want me to go with this slide? Or? Yes, they will go with this slide. Okay. So um, let's look at the slide and we've got a timeline here. And basically what we do is the bond has a lifespan, right? So you invest in a bond today and you carry it out through to maturity, right? But often um, when we are valuing the bond, we need to work out the market price today. And the market price today is based on the future income of the bond, right? So that's any asset. How is an asset valued is based on the income it will earn you over the life of the asset. So a bond works in the very same way, right? So you have your fixed interest payment, um, your fixed interest payments over the life as well as the capital being paid back at maturity, right? So at the maturity, you receive the face value of the bond, right? And then based on the current interest rate or the uh, rate that you earn on the market, which is called our yield to maturity, you can generate the market price of the bond. So as you can see, you bring everything back from the maturity of the bond, which is probably 10 years from now to today's uh, present day, which is the market price of the bond, the prevailing what, how much you will pay for a bond like this, what's worth it to pay for a bond like this, based on how much you're going to earn in the current market rate. So it's the present value of all future cash flow. Okay, so we have a few questions, Yumna, to just test to see if if they understood what you were saying. So let's see, let me put a poll question up in the chat. So I think people invest in bonds because they 
quick, you expect to get rich quickly, expect to receive periodic interest, expect the value of the bond to increase. What's your choice? Make your choice, make your choice. And if you can't select on there, on the, you can put in the chat. Ladies and gentlemen, I expect you to be seeing only or to be able to use the chat on the left if you can't see it. And in, yeah, good. People are seeing the chat. So if you can't see the chat on the left, if you look at the top of your application or your, your application, the easy people chat, you click the chat there, it will show the chat on the left, on the right side. So I can see center says periodic interest. Let's choose that. And Mpo says the C. Okay, let's see if I can choose for Mpo. Mpo. Let's see if I can choose for you. Submit vote. Let's see. Okay, let's keep on responding, ladies and gentlemen. How many people do we have? We have 26 people. So if we have 11 people, uh, 12. 12, 12, 12, 12 responses, it's too low. We need to get about 20 people responding. Yumna, how many people do we want to respond here? So that we, out of 26. Out of 26, mm. at least uh, 60, 70% we've just uh, emphasized participation. So everybody mm. should be like initially very on board. Yeah, and you you remember my you remember my mother's approach to my what my foolproof <laughs> way, my foolproof way of filing in the answer is small to choice. My mother told me to choose this one. Okay, second one, foolproof. <laughs> foolproof, definitely. <laughs> definitely. So yeah, all I'm trying to say is it's a small to choice. So you can choose anything. Okay, <laughs> so. People invest in bonds because they, what's our response there, Yumna? I leave it to you, John. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Explain it to them. <laughs> okay, you're leaving to me. Okay, so they expect to receive the periodic interest. Ladies and gentlemen, so if you say the C, that's not really why people invest in bonds. They expect to receive periodic interest as income. Let's ask you another question about bonds, theoretical question. When a bond matures, the investors should expect to. Uh, uh, uh -huh. my, my internet on the other side is, is being naughty. No pop up. Did, did, did you see any pop up there, Yumna? No, no pop up here, John. No pop up. It's okay, let me try again. I don't know why it's, it's, it's dancing up and down. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Okay, now they should be. Okay, yes, make yes. your choice, ladies and gentlemen. It's there. Yeah. When a bond matures, the investor should expect to receive the bond market value, bond interest or coupon only, bond face value, and last coupon or interest. Make your choice. What would you choose? Remember my foolproof way. Foolproof. Okay, let's mute someone. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are in the, if you please make sure that you are muted because we, we have so many people, so we need a clean line. If you don't mute yourself, don't worry. Yumna or myself will help you with the muting. <laughs> yes, it's very difficult to help you. <laughs> Kamakelo says bond face value last book. Okay, that's Kamakelo choose. And then Miranda also says C. Amu says C. When a bond matures, C. So now we have about 12 people responding. 13 people. Okay, so we are doing well. We are doing reasonably well, okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, you are right. When you a bond matures, you will receive the face value in the last coupon. Let's see if this is still theory. You now. Okay, you are back. You are back on you now. Okay. So, um, a bond, even though um, you get risk-free bonds, 
uh, every investment bears a risk, right? So let's look at the risks that we um, incur when we invest in bonds, right? So you have interest rate risk, right? So the bond prices are interest rate sensitive and they have an inverse relationship, right? So an inverse relationship means when the interest rates go up, the bond price goes down. When the bond price goes down, the interest rates go up. So it's an inverse relationship, right? So you have the price risk. Due to interest rate risk, the price of the bond is affected only relevant if the bond is sold before maturity, right? So most people hold the bond till maturity, but if you intend to sell the bond on the secondary market, the price is affected by the interest prevailing interest rates, right? And then also you have reinvestment risk, right? If interest rates drop, the coupon reinvest at a lower rate. But the lower the interest rate, it causes the price, the price to increase and vice versa. So basically this risk does cancel out because you will benefit on the price and, um, you know, from losing out on the lower investment rate on the coupon, right? There's, there's a question, Yumna. Okay. So Mpo, I is the end is up. Okay, Mpo, you can go ahead. Very much, John. Morning, and you met to you as well. I just wanted to verify: should we be taking down notes, or the presentation will be forwarded to us? Thanks. Oh, oh, oh! Sorry, sorry, sorry. We forgot to tell you. So, what we are going to do after this lecture is we are going to share the presentation, which means we are. I'm going to share the presentation on my UNISA, and I'm going to send an email to everyone with who's on my that email list. The presentation number oh. one, number two. Remember, we are recording this lecture. So I'm going to share okay. a link to the lecture because I'm going to upload this lecture onto YouTube and then put oh. the link in the put the link in the on my UNISA. All so right. that is, Thank you, this information is accessible afterwards. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Puyumna, you're back. Okay. Then the other risks which you incur when you um, issue a bond is your credit risk, a possible decline in credit worthiness of the bond issuer. So what that means is that the person you gave the loan to is unable to pay interest or unable to give you back your capital investment, right? So that's your credit risk, right? Yield curve risk is changes in the curve negatively will affect the bond value. So once again, it's changes in the interest rate which affect the bond negatively, right? And the curve we will be going through, um, we will be going in more detail, uh, we will be going through it in more detail with convexity because the more curved your bond is, the higher the price changes and the more risk you are at, right? Then you have liquidity risk is that if the bond can't be sold easily, right? So um, normally a very uh, large bonds are difficult to sell or reissue. Um, that's your liquidity risk, right? And then some bonds, which we'll, we will be going through in detail as we go further, it has a call risk where the bond can be called at any time, most favorable to the issuer and the reissue at a lower price. So if interest rates are favorable to the issuer, what they can do is they can call the bond, pay you back your money, reissue at a lower rate. Right, so that's what you call a call risk. So these are the type of risks that you face when issuing bonds. Right. Yeah. Questions. Sure. There it is. Inflation is increasing in the market. Prices of the is of issued bonds are expected to increase as investors receive more interest. Reduce as investors expect to receive less interest. Reduces similar bonds. Make your choice, ladies and gentlemen, in the chat. Should we give them a, 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 a hint, Yumna? We can give them a hint, yes, John. Invest relationship. That's the hint. Do, you, do we need to do more than that? <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, please respond. Let's do it quickly. We are trying to cover a lot of ground. So the quicker you respond, the better, because then we can move quickly. If you don't see the pop-up put in the chart, inflation is increasing in the market. Prices of issued bonds are expected to dash, dash, dash. And if, if my hint is 
inverse relationship. <laughs> do you think it's good enough that really, I think it's so strong. Yeah. What do you think, Yumna? It's it's a very good <laughs> tip. You don't have to think too hard. Yes, in the contribute to the speed of this lesson. Okay, we have eleven responses. But we have twelve and two participants. John, we need more we need to do something, guys. We need more responses. We need everybody present here. Make do something. Fun. Because we now we have almost thirty people who are live or live here. Yes. Okay. Now we have eleven. Eleven plus three, fourteen plus four, fifteen. Okay. We have fifty percent. Okay. No, that's great. It okay. It's improving. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, I will. Okay, let's. Uh, I'm giving two more seconds while I'm looking for the next question for this one. Okay, so inflation is increasing in the market. Price of issued bonds are expected to reduce, reduce as similar bonds issued in the markets are generating higher interest. This one, this one is the correct response, ladies and gentlemen. So C is your correct response. Yumna was saying interest rate risk. And invest. Why? Why I said invest? Invest is the correct response because if inflation is increasing, we expect the interest rate of bonds to also increase. Interest rate of new bonds, but already issued bonds keep on paying the same coupon. Therefore, to cover up for the dif difference, you have to reduce as similar bonds are issued. Okay, I don't have to explain that. I don't think so. Let's ask a question. <laughs> okay, so you know, like I just want to add to that is that how do we combat inflation? When inflation is high, interest rates go up. So that's how your price is affected. Inverse relationship. Inverse relationship. Yes. Okay. All right, next question. Next question. A bond faces liquidity risk, and I think the pop up is there, isn't it? I think it's there. Yeah, it is there. Yeah. And there's someone who's, let's see who's end is up. Is yeah, central, you can shoot. Okay. Hi, how are you? Good, good. I'm good, thanks. Um, so I'm just taking you guys back a bit with regards to call risk. There's a part I missed where Yumna said the issuer can recall it and reissue at, I don't know if she said a lower interest rate or a higher lower interest rate. rate. Lower oh, interest lower. rate. Okay, thank you. Oh, okay. Oh, that was a question. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Nesengani. Oh, yes. KB. You can talk, sir. Yeah, morning once again. And my apology mm -hmm. for, for late connection. I just wanted to get clarity regarding the yield negative you 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 spoke something like negative um invest in the on the previous slide i did not get it well because i'm i was trying to 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 apply it practically or what is it that is affecting can you little bit uh, elaborate it further yes this one of yield careful risk thank you okay so we have yield curve risk so i didn't go very in detail about it because we'll be covering it in a section called convexity so you have a yield curve so depending on the shape of the curve which is how your what convexity we calculate hey, Yumna, yes. uh, let, let's cover it when do convexity mr okay. nesengani let's yes. see cover it because he, uh, currently if she gives you the explanation she knows the answer already so it will be so difficult to understand yes are you happy with that uh, mr is, nesengani is it fine for you mr singani thank you doctor and the presenter i understand yeah because okay. if we try to to explain it it will be so confusing it might confuse you so it, that's not right. just you and everyone in the, in the chat did <laughs> yes 
Uh, we only have seven responses, Yumna. Eight now. Come on, guys. Come on, let's move. Let's move. Okay. E plus it's eight plus three eleven. We spoke about liquidity risk in the previous slide. Mm. What is liquidity? Let's move. Ladies and gentlemen, we are on slide number eight. 60 is not a small number to get to. <laughs> okay, now people are responding. Okay. Now people are responding. We are seeing some movement. Okay, let's. Okay, Mr. Nesenga, I know your end is still up. Do you have a new question or do you want to put it down so that we uh, we, we know what's okay? Let's move on. You now. Oh, still you. <laughs> okay, now bonds come in different structures, right? So the main one which we will be covering is your coupon bonds where you receive semi-annual coupon payments based on the face value of the bond and you receive the face value at maturity, right? What is a semi-annual coupon? You get paid interest twice a year, right? So you get paid for the first half of the year, six months, and the second half of the year, right? So that's called a normal coupon bond, semi-annual. That's the main bond we will be valuing today. Then you get zero coupon bonds, right? Which don't have any coupons. They bought at a discount and you receive the face value at maturity, right? So you're earning on the capital gain. So basically you, you buy the bond for 700 and at maturity you receive a thousand rand, right? So there's no interest payments or anything like that. You just receive a capital gain in the end, right? That's a zero coupon bond. Then a section we'll be covering today is bonds with options, right? So you get callable bonds. It allows the issuer to redeem the bond at a time before maturity, right? So if the call date, so if at the call date, the market price exceeds the call price, the bond will be called. The issuer will then refinance at a lower rate. What we spoke about in the previous slide is that when the rates go lower, the issuer of the bond would like to pay you back your money and then reinvest at a lower interest rate, right? So that they don't have to pay this high interest rate which they initially entered into with you, right? So that's a callable bond. Then you get a puttable bond, right? The option for the investor to sell the bond prior to maturity. Now it comes for you, the person who issued the bond, who's investing in the bond. Now you want to sell the bond prior to maturity. The investor will put the bond at lower interest rates, taking advantage of the price hike. Puttable bonds offer a lower yield, right? So if interest rates are lower, the price will be higher. So therefore, the issuer of the bond would like to sell at that time because we want to sell at a high price, right? Remember the inverse relationship, right? So those are callable and puttable bonds, right? And we will be valuing them, calculating them and explaining them as we go further, right? Then you get convertible bonds, extendable bonds, retractable bonds, exchangeable bonds and floating rate notes, right? But for now, let's focus on coupon bonds, callable bonds, and puttable bonds. The other ones you can research and look through and um, for your own interest purposes. Okay, let's test. Let's test, Yumna. Let's test if we if your explanation was good. Okay, I hope so. I hope a callable so. bond is a bond which dash dash dash. Make your choice, make your choice, make your choice, ladies and gents. Okay, so. A callable bond. Maybe it's a, it's a bond with a phone number. You know, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, that's a good one, John. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Call and put you. You guys better get a... Uh, in tune with call and put of investments, eh? nothing to do with the call. Yeah. I, I, I would suggest there's no answer, it's a bond with a phone number. Finish <laughs> and clear. <laughs> Make your choice, ladies and gentlemen. We need to have more participation. 
10 people. Let's do, if you come here and just listen, mm -hmm, it won't be worthwhile. That's the honest truth. Okay? Because then you, you, you forget everything. Then what have you done? You could be better off on a Saturday, Saturday like this, if you are in Deben, I don't know why you wouldn't be in Deben, but I don't know why people are not in Deben. Beautiful <laughs> weather outside. <laughs> yeah, John, you're the lucky one. Yeah, yeah. Yes, beautiful weather outside. Yeah, we're in the concrete jungle, but I should I, explain here. Eh? I don't know what you're doing in the concrete jungle. Okay, yeah. you not, let's see. Now, I think we have enough for this one. A callable bond is a bond which... Let's see what people said before we explain. Most of you said the issuer can buy back from the ah, 100%. C is the correct answer, ladies and gentlemen. And are you happy with that answer, Ayumna? Yes, yes, that's an answer. Just to iron it out for those of you who've chosen uh, option B, right? Option B works with the puttable bond, right? The holder can sell back to the put means to sell, call means to buy. Right, so that would be a puttable bond. The issuer, he can buy back the bond. That's a callable bond from the holder at a specific time. Right. Then we have a next question, Yumna. Let's okay. see if they still remember what is zero coupon, zero coupon bond. I always like to emphasize that you know, like. If you've ever heard of Sharia compliant banking, yes, um, it works with zero coupon bonds because they don't work with interest; they work with capital repayment, right? So, so, so you're giving a big hint there, Yumna. Yes. <laughs> so everyone will get it right. Yes, hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully your hint was good enough. But the good thing, Yumna, is people. It looks like people are, if we are warmed up now. They are putting their re response. They are responding a little bit quicker. That's good. And your big, big hint looks like it's, it's bearing <laughs> fruit. Yeah. You know, I always um, like to give an example or like, you know, this type of piece of information because it's easier to remember. Yes. It's, uh, especially for people who are over 30, not not 26 year old <laughs> like me. Yeah, no, it's true. It's uh, over 30s. Really you difficult. need examples. Yeah. You need yeah. examples. Yes, we need examples. Okay, we can proceed. I think. We, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. We didn't even say. So yeah, everyone is right. That's why I was just proceeding without explaining. Yes. So a zero coupon bond is a bond which does not pay interest and is bought at a discount. At a discount. So your explanation was perfect, Yumna. Okay, bond valuation. Ladies and gentlemen, I am expecting you understand your financial calculator. I don't really mind whatever calculator you have, but I, I'm, I'm expecting you understand it because we won't have time to explain how your financial calculator works. Works. Not because we are lazy, maybe we are lazy, but not because we are lazy, but because everyone has a different financial calculator. When I did my finance up to my owners, because I, we need, I needed a financial calculator, I had the cheapest financial calculator I can ever think of, but it worked. Now I don't have a financial calculator, I use Excel, okay? So PV is present, okay, no, I won't even waste your time explaining that. This number line, Yumna explained a little bit. She, so she said, to find the market price or the present value of the bond, you are discounting the coupons over the entire life of the bond. But now we are putting that explanation on a number line with numbers. Okay, sounds right. Calculate, so I'm reading there, calculate the value of a bond whose annual coupon is 10%, matures in three years at a face value of 1,000, and yield to maturity is 8%. So we converted this question onto the number line. So we are saying this is what we are looking for, but it's a 10% coupon. So every year it pays 10%, 10% of what? of the face value. So 10% of 1,000 is 100 rand. So it's paying 100 rand, 100 rand, and 100 rand. It's maturity, like Yumna said, it will pay the face value. 
and the last coupon. We already have it. We did the theory. So at maturity, would pay that. So to find the value, so we are discounting. So what we are doing is we are finding the present value of coupon one, coupon two, coupon three, and we are then finding the present value of the maturity value of the phase value. That's what we are doing. So in the finance, so this is the theory, but in the financial, so that's the, what your financial calculator is doing for you in the background. But you don't have to know all those things. In your financial calculator, you are going to say FV, 1,000, you put as FV, PMT, you put as 100, I, you put as 8, N, you put as 3. Then you say, go get me the present value. I think it will give you 1051. It will give you 1051. But I would suggest to all of you, to take out your financial calculator and make sure you get 1051. 10, okay. So that we impose, yes, you can shoot. Okay, thank you to the presenter and to John. Don't, do, don't say thank you first, just shoot so that we, we are <laughs> on it. <laughs> okay. Um, the PMT, the 100, how did we mm. get it? We said 10% of 1,000. Oh, oh, okay, thank you. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Next one, anyone with a question? Because the next slide, ladies and gentlemen, I am not going to, it's not going to be a secret. It's going to be a question you are going to do. So ask now. Mpoyo is the end, is still up. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I think everyone is itching to go. Next is your question. So we actually have three questions. So what I want you to do, ladies and gentlemen, do this calculation, find the find the PV. Okay, so it says calculate the value of the bond whose annual coupon is 10%, much more the face value of 100. And due to maturity is 8%. Okay. You know, you know, are you seeing what I'm seeing, Yumna? Yes, I'm seeing what Okay, but uh, we, we are not, let's pretend we are not seeing it. Yes, that's fine. There's two other <laughs> questions to support. Okay. So then put the answer in the chat. Once you finish doing 1.1, you do 1.2, find the price if yield maturity is 10%. Then you do 1.3, find the price if yield maturity further increases to 12%. So this yield to maturity, this one, is the number which is then changing for 1.2 and 1.3. Please put in the chat. Do your quick calculation and put in the chat. So I gave you, we gave a big hint here. FV, 100, PMT, 100, blah, blah, blah. so the first 1.1 should be easy. Then do 1.2 and 1.3 and put in the chat. Then we can talk about it. Let's do it quickly. So like um, while you guys are doing it, my suggestion to you always when you are valuing a bond, you start to calculate your coupon because here in this first question, John has given it to you. But in your exam, it will never be given to you. So you always calculate it. You take your coupon rate, multiply it by the face value of the bond. And now when you're going to question 1.2 and question 1.3, um, basically the only thing that changes is your yield to maturity. And you'll see how the price of the bond is affected by these changes in yield to maturity. It will further explain the changes in the yield, the effect it has on the price. Oh, on the price, yes. Yes. I, I, I don't see your answer in the chat. Okay, I'm just speaking on people. You know, when I, when I was young, okay, when I was in school, I wasn't a bully. Why? Because I was a small boy. I was short, shorter than everyone. That was my problem. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, if I was a big boy, I think I was going to bully people. Angel, Angel, Nene, I don't see your answer in the chat. Maybe it's already there. Okay, if I call someone, you, if I call someone whose answer is already there, you should do. You should shout at me. Okay, let me look. Kuzo, Matsimela, I don't see your answer in the chat. What's happening there, Kuzo? Put your answer in the chat. Lisbeth, I don't see your answer in the chat. Can you see it, Yumna, in the chat? No. No. Okay. Miranda, Miranda Legoro, is it in the chat, Yumna? No, not in the chat. 
What about Opai? Do you see Opai's answer in the chat? So Miranda says she doesn't understand the formula. So Miranda, we are working with the calculator. So you have to input into your calculator, which calculates the value for you. So you input the values in your calculator according to the future value, payment, yield to maturity, and then um, you will get the answer. Opa, what do you want to say, Opa? I see you unmuted yourself. Hey, sorry, I'm not seeing my chat now. I wanted to type. I'm not seeing it. Where I to type? A, I think it goes to hit your chat straight away. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm trying to check from the word start and it's not showing. Okay, at the top of your, 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 your MS Teams, do you see people in chat at the top? It's not, it's not showing anymore. I changed the phone because my laptop was... But so was, was misbehaving. Yeah, so not, not allowing you know, you know what you can do? One of the solutions which often works is you go out and come back in. Yeah, let me do that. Thank is, you. Then it usually it works. Okay. Is, is there a response from Peter there, Yumna, before I ask him to do something? No, Peter. no response from Peter. Peter, what's happening? Why are you ignoring us? Are you angry with Yumna or me? No, 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 I'm here. I'm calculating. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I thought you were angry with you. Now you would be angry with me. <laughs> I'll never do that. She's so cheery. It makes me happy. Karabo, Karabo, what do you want to say? You can shoot? Karabo, your hand is up. Karabo, Shabalala. And you are on mute, yes? You can talk. Uh, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, like, yeah. shoot, 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 shoot. Uh, my question is to do with risks. Uh, um, I know that they are risk-free bonds. Mm -hmm. I want to ask about the economy of the country. If, for instance, it's, it, it's bad or it becomes very bad, um, mm -hmm. what happens? Can the country still issue the risk-free bonds, and in general, if the, 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 the country just has a very bad economy, do they in, um, offer interest-free bonds? I'm um, sorry, risk-free bonds. Okay, the, the issue of risk-free, Karabo, is a theoretical construct. A theoretical construct to say there is a bond which is guaranteed that it's going to be paid, whatever happens. That's what they say, risk-free. So we say a government bond is risk-free because as long as there's Karabo, there's Yumna, there's Peter, there's Jacqueline, they will find people to tax and pay for the bond. That's the theory of a risk-free bond. So the, yes, a country can go bust. It happened lots of times. Like during the European crisis, EU crisis, the Greeks could not pay for their bonds. So they defaulted. Then it was no longer risk-free. But remember, we are talking about a theoretical construct called risk-free. That's what you are supposed oh, okay. to keep in your mind. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Assumption. <clears throat> basically, it's an assumption for us to be able to calculate, basically. So that's what it is. Oh, okay. We have answers, you now. Okay, it's so good shouting at people was useful. Um, we have like quite consistent answers. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's, um, let's, let's, yeah, what do you want to say? No, I see two students saying that they don't know how to go about it. Um, if you can just give me 30 seconds, John, let me just try. Can you try this with me? Um, Miranda and Amu, I'm just going to. What, what, uh, what, what calculator do you have, Miranda? Miranda, what calculator do you have? No, she's ignoring you. Yeah, she's not ignoring me, Yumna. Okay, no, so um, Amu Kelani and Miranda, you have to take out your calculator and input the values on it. So either you would say 
1000 and then put future value or maybe your calculator wants you to put future value first then you say 1000 enter then you do that with payment you do that with n you do that with i y normally it wouldn't say yield to maturity it says i y and then you put in eight percent and then you would have a button which says cpt compute or you would even um, just click on the present value and say equals and see what answer you get. Please try that. Try that, uh, but we are not stopping there. We are going, Miranda, we are going. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I think most of you got right, your answers right. Uh, Peter didn't get it right. I don't know, your, your something, you put, you put something wrong there, Peter. I can see your numbers are wrong. Peter. So the first one. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, Peter. Okay, now Peter got it right now. Yeah, you are perfect. What do you want to ask? You are you did it right this time. Rudairo, I'm seeing she's back. Uh, Opa is back, so your uh, your client is okay. So, okay. But what I want to say on this slide is to say if you do your calculation right, 1051, you can see that the 1051, the price of the bond is more than 1000, which is the face value. We call that a premium bond. If the coupon and the yield to maturity are the same, so here 10%, 10%, 10%, you are going to go get what we call a par value bond, which means the, the future value, the face value, and the market price are the same. Every time you see coupon 10%, you to budget 10%, you should know without calculating that it's a power value bond, the future or the market price is equal to the future face value. Then if coupon is 12% is higher than 10%, which is our coupon there, you to maturity 12% is higher than the coupon there you get 951 we call it a discount bond because the current market price is less than the face value ladies and gentlemen you now spent quite a bit of time talking about what you call semi-annual bond semi-annual bond i want you to calculate this semi-annual bond and give us to say the future fv future value we already gave you so what is the L? If we know that it's semi-annual, it means it pays twice a year. So how many times it is going to pay? That's your L. Your IY, which is your interest, your yield to maturity, is paid twice a year. What is your yield to maturity? Your PMT is now, your PMT is, should I tell them 10% of 1,100, but it's now paid twice, half yearly. What is your PMT? Then get me the present value. Didn't I give you them the answer there, Yumna? Mm, I, I, some of them you've given them, John, but some of them I think we will have to help. They are, they are still drowning. Okay. Yes, yes. No, but that's why we're here. We're here to help you guys. So, now you can, while they are working it out, you can talk to Miranda. I see she has a sharp year of 78. Okay. So, Miranda, you have a sharp calculator. Um, let me see if I can just research it and have a look at it and give you a little bit of an example. Or, like, give you a little bit more information how to operate. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm trying to be mean now, Alice. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to be helpful. It's always <laughs> good when you're trying. <laughs> Different. Miranda, did you check the help uh, the, the videos I put on 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 my this? Okay, you, you can. But you find, once you find the answer, I can start talking you now because I'm just trying to be mean in the meantime. No, so it's fine. I found a sharp calculator. It doesn't okay. get complicated. So basically, Miranda, um, I I don't have a sharp in front of me, so I don't know how it works. But please try like the way I did say earlier. Please try the input method of using, putting the number and then pressing the, I think it's like the third row up from the numbers. You have all your um, investment uh, variables there. N, I, Y, P, V, P, M, T, future value and uh, comp is on your right hand side. So when you want to um, calculate a specific answer, you would have to press comp. So if you can try that, 
Um, even with this current bond on the current question on the. On the slide, um, then we can help you from there. And then you will have to tell us what you're struggling with. Why is it not coming or and then we can take it from there. OK, let's let me start to, uh, trying to Peter. What's happening? I don't see anything there. Let's uh, let me go and if I find someone, remember, you if I call out someone who has already responded, please shout at me. OK. Uh, Angel Nene, what's happening? I don't see anything. Imelda. Imelda. Imelda we, we don't see any. Is there Imelda in the chat? The response yeah. from Imelda. It's like. But I did respond. Yeah, you did. She just responded now. Okay. My apologies. Joshua. Joshua just responded. Like <laughs> <laughs> John, okay. you have a connection here. Yeah, okay. Kutso. Kutso. Hasn't responded. What's happening, Kuto? Are you stuck? Talk to me. Okay. Yes, John. I'm using I'm using Excel. It's giving me troubles here, but I'm getting there. Okay. No, you no lo hizo. Anything no from no hizo there, No, nothing from no hizo. No um, hizo. Talk to uh, me. John, can you just excuse me for two minutes? OK, so I'm going to just do free play by myself. OK, no, you're Liso. Sorry about that, John. <laughs> I'm, I complain. That's my thing. No, you're Liso. Talk to me. Hey, let me see. Maybe no, you're Liso is a response there. While least I'm trying to. OK, let's see. Let's see. OK, we are having more people, more people responding. Ladies and gentlemen, remember, we are just trying to drive so that you can uh, you participate. That's the idea. That's the idea. Mr. Nesengani. What's happening? I'm finalizing doc. OK. OK. Let's let me look for some the last person. Rabelani. You talk to me. What's happening? Is Rabelani there? Well, Karabo is a response there. Yeah, I'm back here. That's because good. That's good. I was uh, talking to Mr. Nessing and she was saying, Ah, Yumna, why did she run away from us? You mm. made all the answers. <laughs> my my other job doesn't disappear, John. My normal day job. To oh, your day job is still pushing yeah. you. Yeah, okay. you see. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go to the answers. There is the answer. Ladies and gentlemen, FV is 1000, N is 10. 350 1170. Where did we differ? Let me look for. Near. We got here uh, Karabo with a different answer. Mm. With a different answer. So, uh, do you want to go ahead with some suggestions or can I, John? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, you can go ahead. So, basically, like most of you got the correct answer 1170. But those of you who didn't, um, maybe you can have a look at your calculator. It must always be in end mode, right? You will have begin mode and end mode. Maybe if you have a new calculator or if you've been uh, pressing a few buttons, just make sure your calculator says END, end mode, right? And then when you are doing a semi-annual bond, your payment is half, right? So it's a thousand times by 10% divided by two because you're receiving it twice a year, right? So they divide that 100 rand, they give it to you twice a year. But then you also adjust your interest rate because you divide it by two as well and it um, forms part of the semi-annual bond, right? So you earn 3% in the first half of the year, the next 3% you earn in the second half of the year. So that's where you put in your, you adjust for your interest rate as well as your payment, right? 
and then your period, which is N, is fairly straightforward. And then you should compute your present value and get the answer of uh, 1,170 rand and 60 cents. Okay, you know, let's see uh, why I brought in my Excel spreadsheet because this is a very important concept. We will need to know this concept when we do bond duration and bond convexity. This yeah. calculation of bonds, so like you is saying, so our FV is 1000. Where are we getting the 1000 for you? Bear with me, bear with me, ladies and gentlemen, for those who got it right. Here is the 1000. Our PMT, I saw there was a question of PMT there. Our PMT, we are saying is 10% of 1,000. Okay, but then 10% of 1,000 is 100. But the question says it pays semi-annual. So 100, 100 is being paid per year, but semi-annually we are getting two payments, so is 50, 100 divided by two. Our yield to maturity, or our I, what am I missing? Our N. The bond is maturing in five years. So our N is obviously five, but not obviously, because we are going to get 10 payments because they are being paid semi-annually. So it's five times two equals to 10. Then our interest, our I, obviously, not obviously, is six, but it's not obviously because it's a semi-annual. Is paid half yearly, so it's six divided by two, which is three. If you do the magic there, it will give you one one seven zero. Do you want us to do the magic in Excel, or Yumna? Yes, please, John. That will be great. Let me see how this Excel works. Uh, don't you think some people will be lost? Um, just for <laughs> okay. me. Do it for me, John. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's Equals go. two. PV, because that's what we are looking for. So if you look here, it says the rate. Our rate is 3, but remember it's 3%, so it's 0 0.03. Comma, N par is what? Is the period. Our period here, N par, is N there, so we put a 10 there. Then it asks us for if FV, which is the maturity value, is 1,000. And our PMT, no, look at me, look at, look at me. Our PMT is 50, this 50. And our maturity value, which is 1,000 there. Then you close the blanket. There we go. We mm. were trading in pounds, but not anymore. We do that. Sure, that's great. Oh, you, no, 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 I won't do this. There is a big temptation. I'm going to pull this off the screen and we can proceed, Yumna. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> oh, OK. Thanks, John. Just we haven't met, but these people can get an idea of who they're dealing with, <laughs> who is presenting to them. OK. Do, do you allow us to use the Excel during the exam? <sighs> No, use the financial calculator, Dairo. I don't have a financial calculator. That's why I was showing you in Excel. The moment I learned Excel, I say, say to myself, my mother was a clever woman to send me to school. No more financial calculator. That's the, that's what I said. <laughs> Tato said, when paid the same amount the, every time you are receiving, does it necessarily mean that the amount is being compounded twice? No. Okay, when we are doing the calculation, we are not compounding. Twice. We are just saying 50 and put in the financial calculator. If you are asking a technical, technical question, don't worry, I'm not going to answer that technical question. But what you are putting in the calculator is 50, and what you are putting as I is the half, that which is which was three in that case. I'm not going to ask the, answer the technical question because the technical question is never coming in the exam. And it will confuse everyone, which is not the intention. Oh, the confusion. Yes. Uh, this is just the way we, in, for now, this is the level you need to be at. The level, we are, yeah, that's what you need to know for the exam. Okay, over to you, Yumna. Okay. All right. So um, now let's look at another example. And first we were calculating the price of the bond, right? Now we want to calculate the yield to maturity which is the interest rate of the bond, the current interest rate of the bond. 
So the best way to explain that is with an example. And we have a bond that pays an 8% coupon payment rate annually, right? So this is easy for you. It's an annual payment, not a semi-annual, on its thousand rand face value. It matures in four years time and is selling for 967 rand and 59 cents. Calculate the expected yield to maturity of the bond, right? So basically every valuation of the price or the calculation of yield to maturity, you're going to have this table, right? You draw up this table, the same thing you do in the exam. You take a piece of paper, you draw all your variables on the left hand side or whichever side you prefer, and you put your given information on the right hand side, right? So the present value of the bond is 967.59. Now, if you look there, I've put in a negative in front of the 967.59, right? Because as an investor, we're paying that out. It's money going out, right? If you don't adjust for the notation, your calculator will give you an error, right? So you do your inflows and outflows in the respective notation, right? So your money is going out. You're borrowing this money, 967.59. You're going to receive 1000 Rand back. You're receiving it back. I made it positive, which is your future value or face value of the bond, right? Then it's an annual payment of 8% times by a thousand Rand, right? 8% times by a thousand Rand. That's how we work out our coupon payment, right? Our period is four years because it's four years until maturity. And now we want to calculate our interest rate, right? So if you please put in all these values on your calculator and you compute the interest rate, you should get a 9% return on the bond, right? So that's when we're calculating yields or we're calculating yield to maturity, right? It's, um, that's the notation that we uh, compare in and we explain in, you know, you're getting a 9% return on this investment. Any question, ladies and gentlemen? Any question? Because you know, the there's no surprise. Next slide is going to be your question. I don't see any hint, so I'm going to put it up. Okay, so calculate the yield to maturity of the following bond. Now, the only difference here is that we've included semi-annual coupon payments. So remember to adjust your payment your period and your um, when you get your final answer, we have to multiply by two to get your annual yield to maturity, right? So your time to maturity is 10 years adjusted for semi-annual. Your coupon rate is 12% times by the face value divided by two because it's semi-annual. The market price is 950, remember to change your notation negative because it's an outflow. All right. And I hope for you to get the correct answer when you put into your calculator. The calculator does all the work for you. And mm -hmm. you can put the yes. final answer. Yeah, then they go uh, look for the I. It should give you the right answer. Oh, the OPA already is an answer. She is really challenging the status quo. Definitely. You know, <laughs> there was a fascinating question on my UNISA. Yumna. Did you, you see that? Which was the, uh, why do you want to be in the WhatsApp group? Yes. <laughs> What's your answer, Yumna? Why would you want to be on the WhatsApp group? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, um, John, I, I understand it, like we're not part of it, but we, we definitely want to promote the, My the forum. But this thing of WhatsApp, it's like uh, you feel secure because you have it on you all the time. And mm. it happens and in groups. And yes. you know, we are, we are group people. We are, what do you call it? We are cultural people. We, we are happy when we are in groups. Yes, you feel secure. And mm. the thing is that the only problem with it is that uh, you get people who will be on WhatsApp and then they don't read the um, My all the yes, all the information and then 
you get one who reads all the information and just filters it for them and gives oh. you the important but I don't know if you should trust that but I guess for me I've been thinking about it and I said oh it's like you know just to get the correct information in an instant you join the WhatsApp group but I don't know I don't know how how, how, it, how, how, how it works yes yes but sometimes and... I do feel like I want my UNISA to have a voice note so I can speak but um I'm going to learn to make videos, John. I'm going, I'm coming for my master class. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, let's see. Yes. Let's see. Oh, we, we have a few responses. Let, let, how many people do we have so that we know if we are supposed to? 27 people. Responded. Okay, yeah, let's see. Maybe let's give another 30 seconds. Okay, a consistent answer. Mm, that, uh, it's a consistent answer, which makes me think it's yes. correct. Yes. But you know, like on the WhatsApp group, what if it's consistently wrong? <laughs> <laughs> we'll <just have> look. <laughs> okay, let's let's move. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Mm, it's actually consistently that. correct. Okay, so let's go through the answer. You put your negative 950 outflow. Future value or face value is 1,000. Payment is your coupon rate of 12% times 1,000 divided by 2. 120 divided by 2. You double your period because it's now semi-annual period. 10 times by 2, 20 periods. And then when you compute for interest rate, you get 12.9%. Well done to everybody who attempted. Perfect. Those... Also, is there anyone with a quest specific question? Because yes. you are going to get a little bit more complicated. Human is going to be more complicated soon. Yeah, we need you guys to be on board. Please feel free to ask a question. And... Put in the chat. Or you raise your hand if you don't want to talk, you can uh, just put in the chat and then we'll look at it. Any questions about you to maturity? Okay, Yumna is going to get complicated. But before that, she's going to be easy, easy okay. on you. A simple one. Um, before we move on, I just wanted to have you attempt a very simple calculation. Uh, nothing complicated like, uh, no, but actually the calculator is not complicated. I would be lying. Um, you also have a current yield. And how do you calculate the current yield? You take your annual coupon payment and you place it over the bond price to get your current yield, right? That's also another calculation which you might be asked. So we have a 6% coupon bond paying interest semi-annually and has a face value of 1,000 rand. It's market price, so bond price, market price, same thing is 800 rand, and the yield to maturity of the bond is 8%. Please calculate the current yield of the bond, right? So it's a simple calculation. I just want you to use, I want to see the thinking pattern here. There are some uh, aspects in this question which can be a little bit confusing, but if you follow the um, formula, annual coupon payment over the bond price. It's a simple calculation and you can try and generate an answer and put it in the chat for me. Okay, let's go for it. Let's go for it. Let's say now it's not a financial calculator thing. It's just interpreting and the division and dividing and more like. Let's do this quickly, ladies and gentlemen, because it's 12 past 10. Yeah, I don't think we'll waste too much time on this. So we can just cover at least one or two more aspects. Where is Opa's answer now? Opa, last time Opa was the first. Joshua is now the first. Send your way up. Oh, oh, okay, Opa, Opa was second. <laughs> Mpo, where is your answer? Can't see. Okay, let me go and. Okay, I'm going to call people out, Yumna. If I if if I call out someone with an answer, you shout at me. Okay. Steve Van Zyl. Where is your answer, Steve Van Zyl? Ezekiel. Is Ezekiel there? No. Okay. Put something there. 
Gloria. Is Gloria there? No. What is Gloria doing? <laughs> I'm still calculating, sir. <laughs> Remember, it's your annual coupon payment, right? Yes. Do it quickly. Do it quickly. Annual These are now. some of the easy questions you can just quickly get. One okay, tell, tell me about Jacqueline. Jacqueline, is Jacqueline there, Yumna? Uh, no, no Jacqueline here. Jacqueline, what's happening? Uh, I had network connection, sorry. <laughs> Okay, okay. okay, let's go. Let's get going. I'm back now. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, uh, what about Karabo? Is Karabo there? Karabo should be here. No, no Karabo. Ah, Karabo Shabalar. What's happening? Are you ignoring Yumna or are you ignoring me? I think mm -hmm. you're ignoring Yumna. That's the only conclusion I can make. No one is making it personal, <laughs> Making it personal. <laughs> she can't be ignoring me. I, I have not done anything wrong. Yeah. <laughs> what about Kutso? Is Kutso there? Kutso? No, no Kutso. Kutso, what's happening? Kutso Matsimela. Karabo, I'm struggling a little bit. So so it's just a basic calculation. Your annual coupon payment over your bond price gives you your current yield, a simple division. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, okay, we have lots of responses. So let's move on. Let's move on. Okay. So a simple calculation, but you need to know it as well. Your annual coupon payment is 6% times the face value of the bond. Don't adjust for semi-annual because it's your annual coupon payment over the price of the bond which was given. It's a simple seven and a half percent. Okay. okay we can, we, can we move on to more exciting stuff, Yumna? Yes, yes, please. Okay. So now we spoke about callable bonds and puttable bonds. Now we have to calculate the yield of these bonds, right? Because the, by calculating the yield, we can determine whether the bond should be called or put, right? So we have a yield to call. This allows the issuer, right? The person lending the money is the issuer to redeem the bond before maturity at a premium price, right? So the value you are given to call the bond will be your new future value and you will not use the par value, right? So when you're calculating the yield, what you're going to receive in the end is not your face value. You're going to receive the current market or the callable value you're going to receive, right? Then you have a yield to put. It's the rate calculated when the investor has the option to sell the bond before maturity, right? So let's go into a calculation to explain better uh, what we are talking about. Okay, so you get a bond with a call provision where the issuer pays back the holder, right? So the person who invested, um, the person who asked for the bond pays back the holder, right? Happens if interest rates reduce or the financial position improves, right? So now your financial position improved, you want to get rid of this bond, right? So what happens today is, what happens is that the bond is called and the holder is paid the call price, right? You get a call price and they pay the fixed interest coupon and they pay back the call value, right? And what we are going to work out based on this section, so the bond hasn't reached maturity, right? It's at a point in the middle of the life of the bond, not the middle or wherever the position is, you get a bond value and you're going to calculate the yield from this position back to today, right? So you still get your fixed coupon interest and your market price of the bond. And we will be calculating the yield. So a current bond will be selling at, or let's say calculate the yield to call for SA Breweries bond, whose face value is a thousand rand. The current value of the bond, the price of the bond, maturity in 10 is 840 rand. 
maturity is in 10 years time, coupon is 15% and it is callable in 3 years at a price of 1150, right? So that's your call price. So basically, now, like I said in the previous slide, if it's callable at 1150, that's going to be your future value, right? Your coupon, it's an annual bond, so it will be 15% of your face value, right? Normal coupon calculation. Your price, the bond is currently selling at 840 Rand. And the period to which it's being called is three years time, right? So we should put our N as three. From here, you'll be able to calculate your yield to call. So this basically, if you can see the difference, the callable value is now your future value. But you understand why is because it can be bought at one one five zero in three years time. So you're not going to get thousand rand back. You're going to get one one five zero now. It's at a premium, like we spoke about in the previous slide. But now let's calculate the yield to call. How much are you earning on this investment? So when you compute your yield to call, you get. 27% return on this investment over the three years, right? So all yeah. your other values, yes? Yeah, I'm saying let's let them do this one. Okay. <laughs> so basically, it's the same calculation we were doing. You start up your table, you input your values, right? Now it's a word problem because you're going to see, I'm not going to receive face value now, I'm receiving my call value substitute it into face value position to be able to calculate the yield. So calculate the yield to call of a 10% quarterly paying bond four times a year, you're receiving payments with a par value of a thousand rand. The bond matures in 25 years, has a market price of 1,099 rand 10 cents, and the yield to maturity of 9%. It is callable by the issuer in 10 years at a call price of 1340. And a hint which we have here is replace the par value of the, with the call price and the time to maturity with the call date, the market price and coupon remain the same. So basically, just like what we've emphasized, now the bond's future or face value becomes the call value to deduce an accurate calculation. So please attempt this question and put your answer in the chat. And if you have a question, ladies and gentlemen, put your question in the chat. Yeah, we, I, I love discussions so I can understand where... Um, you are a little bit stuck. Yes, yes, so that we can work on those areas. How many times is it, is it paying Yumna, this quarterly bond? Quarterly bond, so it's paying four times a year. So basically okay. you calculate your coupon and instead of dividing by two for semi-annual, two payments a year, you're now dividing by four. Adjust your period by four as well. Okay. That's a hint which Yumna is giving. Yes, no, I, I want you guys to get used to these um, divided payments because you're definitely not going to get any annual um, payment calculations. In yeah, the true, definitely true, not. true. Annual is just for teaching, but the actual exam question will be semi-annual or oh, quarterly yes. or whatever. So you need, get, you need to get used to how to play around with these numbers. Okay, while these people are working hard, let's see, I'll ask you a question, Yumna. Yes. If you look at when you finished your degree, what would you say was the major contributing thing which helped you finish? Because I have some people who go for five, six, ten years without finishing. Um, I'm asking a difficult question. Yeah, I ask. But you know... Um, but I think it's a useful question. Definitely, yeah, but 
I had a lot of motivation on the way, you know. Mm. And I eventually, when I got to my third year, I enjoyed this, you know, this was for me. Initially, when I went into it, um, it really was not for me. But, you know, also like your parents play or the people around you play an important role. We always regarded a BCom degree as a safe career choice. You know, especially when you're in doubt, you do BCom and then mm -hmm. um, it's a well-renowned uh, degree because it's commerce and, you know, you, you need it all over the world and it's, it's a great contributing factor in any form of business, you know. So I was always encouraged um, to go in this path, you know. And um, yeah, it, it's, I would say it's a combination, but in the end, I enjoyed it. I worked hard and became good at it. And that also contributed to the enjoyment, you know, is when you um, understanding what you're doing and um, it's, it's going well for you. So, yes, but like um, it's a lot of hard work from all those around you. I had and supporting lots of. Yeah, like, you know, there was many times I said to my mom, but this is not for me. I want to come back home. You know, I can't live here in Johannesburg and I can't do this. And, you know, she would sit for hours on the phone with me and, you know, talking to me about it, motivating me. And yeah, this is where I am today. How about you, John? Uh, OK, let, let me, but we only have three answers. Let me first shout at people and then I'll tell you what made me is, is, do you see Amu's name in the in the chat today? No. Amu, um, what's happening? You were listening to Yumna. I was just talking to Yumna. <laughs> <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, I was asking Yumna because Yumna finished a degree. So it's always uh, useful to know what others did and how, how they were successful. E email, do you see email that's answer in the chat? No. I don't know what's happening. Jacqueline has a question. Jacqueline? Can shoot? Um, yes, I'm just struggling with the 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 ten percent quarterly paying paying bond. Can you please explain that to me? I think maybe that's why I'm getting it. Okay, um, let's it look at the answer. The then you can I explain why you are looking at the answer. Okay, so basically, you calculate um your future value, which is now your call price, right? We emphasize that. We look at your present value, which is given, which is the market price of the bond. Now we come to quarterly, right? So basically, 10% times 1,000 rand is 100 rand. Now you're receiving it four times a year, so we divide by four. 100 divided by four gives you 25 rand right? Then you get N, which is your period. Your period is 10 years, but we're receiving 40 payments over 10 years. That's how your period is worked out. We're receiving 25 rand 40 times over 10 years, right? And then once you compute your interest rate, you'll get 2.5931, right? And you multiply that by four to get your annual rate which is 10.37. I hope that helps. Yeah, it's a good explanation. Anyone who wants us to do it, and I think it's a reasonably straightforward. I think in Yumna, you did a good explanation there. Okay. Uh, you know, the thing is that word problems, you know, the main thing is understanding what the question is saying, you know, and break it down for yourself. Read it over two or three times. Don't rush. And each item that you read, write down to see what you understand from the question, you know. So, you know, word problems is what gets you into a problem or it gets you the right answer. You just have to okay. read correctly. So we are left with three minutes. I don't think we'll be able to to move past another hour. We are not able to do another thing currently. So we we are going to meet again the Saturday next week. What time, Yumna? The same time works for me. I hope that works for everybody else. 
No, but for me, they, my next Saturday, I can only do half past, half past 10. Oh, so you're only available from half past 10? Yeah, because I have another class at, uh, from, from 8.30. Okay, so let me see if I can uh, make a plan and I'll be in touch with you, John. I okay. just... Um, the, he, yeah, before this, since we are talking about time. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to post the time in the on my UNISA. I'm going to change that uh, the same. I'm not going to put a new post. Um, so the link will be the same, but I'll put the time there and what we are going to cover next uh, next weekend or next Saturday. Uh, Angel? Hi, Sam. Um, can I kindly ask that you send us the slides um, for this for today's class? Because I've been struggling. I don't have my classes on. I've been just listening. I couldn't read much on on what has been posted. Okay. I understood the, everything else. I just need the slides when I look back and try to do everything that we did today. We are going to do better than that, Angel. We are going to download the video and send you a link, and we are going to also send you uh, the slides. Actually, we are going All to right. post Thank the you. slides and the link on my UNISA, and I'm going to send you an email. So it's not going to be a problem right. for you to access all this information. Jacqueline? Thank you so much, sir. Um, so I just wanted to ask if you, like, instead for me, I won't be totally in next because we have a funeral at home. So I just mm -hmm. wanted to ask if what must I do to get next week's class? Is it a matter of fact that I must just join in the, the group so when you send it out, you go, I'm going to able to see it, to see the, yes. the class, the recording. Okay. So every but, class, every class, we are going to post the recording on my UNISA. Oh, if okay. you are on my email list, that email list, if you are SVP, I'm also going to send you an email with the link. The materials, ladies and gentlemen, you are not going to miss it because this class, this these slides and the recording, I'm going to send to you if I can before half past twelve today. Okay, no, I mean for next week, I must not, I must not join in the class. To, um, but the recording, you will have it. Okay, all right. So thank you so much. So the last thing I'm going to ask for you, ladies and gentlemen, because it always helps to get feedback on the, how it's going so that we know where to, to change. So the last question I have for you is how did you find the session? Make a choice there so that we, if there's area where we need to improve, then we can improve. Make a choice, make a choice, ladies and gentlemen. Make a choice and then, then Yumna is going to give us the closing remarks. Okay, Why is um, making a choice? Before I give uh, the closing remark, I see Peter has asked for more questions on yield to call. Uh, Peter, before I upload anything extra, I'd like you to attempt all the questions in the tutorial because there are quite a number of them. I've also uploaded a solution um, so that you may check your answers. In the study guide, there is um, a, a, quite a number of questions as well on yield to call. Highlight yield to call and do all those questions um, now with this explanation that you got from us. And hopefully you can um, master it. And then to close off is... Before you close, okay, let's say, before you close, let me just say, because I want your closing to be the last thing. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, on my UNISA, remember we are posting a lot of material. Tutorial letters, past questions, we are even posting videos. To make why videos, we want it compressed. In five minutes or less, you can learn a concept bit by bit. So that if you have, let's say, 10 minutes of your day, you can actually learn something from my UNISA. You video, five minutes, do practice question, another five minutes, then you are set to go. You can close the UNA. Okay. So um, on my closing note, I would like to motivate you guys to join us. I was so impressed by having 100 participants in our class today. Um, going and watching the recording is never the same as being live in class. And you can ask any question. You can stop us at any time. Uh, we can iron out anything for you live, having a live conversation. So don't underestimate the, the value of it. 
And I'd like to thank each and every one of you for joining us today and giving such an awesome, okay, giving awesome as your review for the class. And enjoy your weekend and we will see you next week. Looking forward to it. Thank you.